Pardon me. Are you Adam Graham? The very same. And this is my old time radio snack wagon. Welcome to the old time radio snack wagon, where we serve up a bite sized portion of old time radio. And now, here's your snack wagon host, Adam Graham. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon, where this week we're serving up something a little bit different. We're taking a break, not only from the Lockhart's journey abroad, but from the 1930s. We haven't had something that wasn't from the 1930s since April 22nd, so I think it'd be nice just to take a breather from that decade. We're bringing you a series I would have thought I would have gotten to sooner on this podcast because it's one of the more fascinating 15-minute series. Guest Star. Guest Star was a syndicated program promoting the sale of defense bonds that began in 1947. Each program was a quarter hour in length. When it started, the guest could be any entertainer you could imagine. You might have a comedy routine, a dramatic sketch, or a musical performance. This was an addition to the music provided by the Savings Bond Orchestra, as well as the obligatory pitch for purchasing savings bonds. To me, this series is a real favorite. The music is always great. The sketches are unique and usually pretty good. It's fun to hear stars like Humphrey Bogart, Benita Granville, or Jack Webb doing something a little different as well as in a short, self-contained pace. However, this sketch is actually very good, and it's really appropriate for uh, Independence Day, which is coming up this week, even though it didn't air anywhere close to Independence Day. In those days, it didn't need to be the 4th of July for a patriotic message. Here from January 13th, 1952, is the episode of guest star, I Am Liberty. The United States Treasury Department presents Guest Star with Harry Sosnick and the Defense Bonds Orchestra, yours truly John Conti and starring J. Carol Nash. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is John Conti, your host for Guest Star, a transcribed feature for Defense Bonds presented by this station as a public service. Defense bonds are an investment in America's freedom and in your own security. Buy them regularly where you work or bank. Harry Sosnick leads the Defense Bonds Orchestra now in a special arrangement of Arkansas Traveler. And now here is our guest, radio and screen favorite J. Carol Nash, in a dramatic episode from American history. Ladies and gentlemen, J. Carol Nash in I Am Liberty. Sometimes there is a voice that whispers in a man's heart. He follows that voice and it leads him to his destiny. This was the voice that whispered to the Alsatian sculptor, Frederick Bartholdi. I am liberty. 
In 1870, while fighting for France against Prussia, he heard another voice speak of liberty. The voice of the great liberator, Giuseppe Garibaldi. Liberty! That's what we are fighting for. Liberty! Yes, but we are fighting a losing battle, Garibaldi. Yes, in another week we will lose Paris. And France will again be in a chance. But liberty will come back, young fellow, in your time, if not in mine. I wonder, is there any country in the world that, that does have liberty? Yes, the United States. A great country, Frederick. Go there after this war is over. See for yourself. I will, Garibaldi. Because inside of me, a, a voice keeps whispering. I am liberty. What, are, what is going on here in the streets of Paris? Why are all those people out there in the streets? People are upset because our troops were defeated. All of Paris is one big angry mob. Mother, get back! Oh, that cobblestone nearly hit my statue of Lafayette. Get away from here, all of you. Clear out. Frederick, be careful. They will throw more stones. Mother, how can I work with mobs roaming in the streets? I, I'm going away. You are leaving Paris? Yes, all during the campaign, Garibaldi kept telling me what a great place America is. That is where I am going, Mother. I am going on the very next boat that sails. I beg your pardon, sir. Is this Pier 24? Oui, mademoiselle. This is Pier 24 in oh. New York Harbor, USA. Oh. Well, I'm looking for the steamship. Mademoiselle, look out. Oh! Oh, you grabbed me just in time. That crate nearly hit me. Mademoiselle, when, when a ship is being unloaded, one must take care. What are you doing here? Well, some refugees were supposed to arrive on this ship. I've come here to help them. Refugees? Oh, they are relatives? No, no, they're just poor people who need help. Oh, oh come, let us get out of this dangerous place. Yes, indeed. Oh, I'm sorry, I was so upset I forgot to thank you, Mr... Bartholdi. Frederick Auguste Bartholdi. Thank you, Mr. Bartholdi. A and you are? Uh, Emma Lazarus. Mademoiselle Lazarus, I greet you. You have a kind heart because you come here to greet the poor refugees, and you help them. With the money I make, my poetry. Oh, you are a poet. Uh, oh, wonderful. How nice it would be if there, if there were a lady like you to welcome every visitor in America. Oh, that's kind of you to say. Wait. Wait. A lady to welcome every visitor. A great lady. Here in New York Harbor. Holding aloft a flaming torch. And... Yes. Yes. From the word you speak and the way you look, are you a poet too? Oui, mademoiselle. A poet who works in clay and stone in bronze. Emma Lazarus, you have given me the inspiration for a poem I shall call Liberty Enlightening the World. I am Liberty. Ah, oh, Frederick, it is good to have you back home in Paris and working again, my boy. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, will you hand me that small chisel, Mother? Thank you. Uh, Nanette was asking for you. I say, Nanette was... Frederick, what is the matter with you? Huh? Is there something wrong? Ever since you came back, you have walked like a man in a dream. Frederick, are you in love? In love? Oui. With the greatest woman any man ever dreamed of, La Liberté, taller than the Arc de Triomphe. What are you talking about? A statue, Mother, a huge statue which which I hope to have placed in New York Harbor. I might have known it would be a statue. <laughs> well, yes, and, and what a statue with a head fifteen or or twenty feet high. So that is the woman you are in love with. Oui. And this very day, I am meeting with some of the great men of France. Edouard de Labuée, the jurist, Ferdinand de Lesseps, who built the Suez Canal, and Alexandre Eiffel, the great architect. And are they too in love with this lady? I hope to persuade them, Mother. Wish me luck, my dear, because I must try to sell a dream to men who deal in realities. So, gentlemen, that is my dream. Liberté enlightening the world. In her right hand, a flaming torch, a beacon to light the way to freedom. A giant statue in New York Harbor, a gift of the people of France to the people of America. Gentlemen, can, can my dream come true? I say yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Monsieur Eiffel. And as one of the great architects of France, what do you say of my plan? Monsieur Bartholet, the statue you describe is a huge undertaking. 
Speaking as an engineer and an architect, I say it can be built. Speaking as a citizen of France, I say it must be built. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Monsieur Eiffel, and, and, and thanks to all of you. Already the voice of liberty is growing louder and louder in my ears. I am liberty. Frederick. Oh, Frederick. Oh, oh yes. Uh, did you say something, my oh, I am not used to posing for a statue. May I put down my arm? No, 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 hold it. Hold it just a little longer. Be- Remember, you are liberty. I am also tired. And I've had very little liberty since you talked to me into posing for this tattoo. Oh, well, well, very well, Mother. You, you, you may rest. Oh, so my arm. Why did you not get Nanette or Fifi for this? Because Liberté is not a young girl. She is a mature woman. I will answer it. I need the exercise. Ah, oh, it is Monsieur Eiffel. Madame Liberté, greeting. Oh, come in, come in, Alexandre. See, my plaster model is, is almost done. Magnificent. Frederick, I bring you good news. Over a hundred cities have formed committees to collect money for your great work. Oh. <laughs> Look, from all over France, from rich and poor, but mainly from the poor, the money is being given centime by centime, franc by franc. <sighs> Clerks, chimney sweeps, peasants, school children, fishermen, even, even the tiny orphans of St. Anne's Refuge have all joined in this gift from the people of France to the people of America. Oh, well, then, then now I must succeed in this project. And with the help of God and the people of France, I will. Well, Monsieur Eiffel, the lady is is going away at last. Your great lady of liberty. Yes. I have given her nearly 20 years of my life, and now she's leaving me. Look, they are nailing up the last two packing cases now. But you are going to America with her, my friend. Oh, yes, yes, of course, and... You? I sail next week on the ship that bears the framework of your statue. Frederick, let me confess something. While I designed those four great girders for your statue, I too began dreaming a dream. Oh. Someday, I hope to construct a monument of another sort. A huge tower here in Paris. The tallest tower in the world. Oh, wonderful, Alexander. Well, well, my dream came true, and so will yours. Yeah, let us hope. But here, here's what I came to bring you. A poem in the morning paper. Oh, but I'm too busy to read a poem. Ah, but this is a poem about the statue by an American lady named Emma Lazarus. Oh, well, that is very interesting, but... Oh, did you say Emma Lazarus? Ah, oui. Hmm, I think I, think I met her once a long time ago. Let me see the poem. <laughs> I thought you would be interested. Here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch. Oh, this is good. It is magnificent. It should be inscribed on the pedestal of your statue. Yes. Yes, it... If I have any voice in the matter, it will be inscribed for... For this poem speaks with the very voice of liberty. I am liberty. Frederick! Frederick, where are... Oh, there you are. Yes, I... I came in here to be alone for a moment. But the ceremonies are about to begin. Everyone is asking for you. Why, President Cleveland keeps saying, where is Bartoli? We can't dedicate the Statue of Liberty without the sculpture. Who fashioned it? Oh, come on. Alexandre, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, I too would be afraid if I had to stand up there on the platform with the President of the United States and all those great people. But uh, you will have to do it. Yes, yes, I know. But, but just give me a moment, Alexandre. To stand inside here in the pedestal and say goodbye to, to my lady of liberty. All right. But make it short. They are waiting. Great lady, in a few moments, you will belong to the United States of America and to the whole world. So goodbye. Goodbye, my lady. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless tempest-tossed, to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Thank 
Thank you, Dick Carroll Nash. I know our guest star audience enjoyed your performance. Well, thanks, uh, Ned. Uh, it was a pleasure being here, and, and especially since I'm a strong believer in defense bonds. <laughs> well, welcome again. Now I know we're glad to have you. Well, seriously, uh, seriously, Ned, uh, it isn't uh, hard for me to be enthusiastic about bonds because I've always found them to be a fine way to save and a safe, profitable investment. And now in today's national defense program, defense bonds play a vital role in helping to keep our country financially strong. Our thrift dollars are defense dollars, dollars that build America's strength and our own financial security. So, friends, let me urge you to buy more and more defense bonds. Buy them regularly through payroll savings where you work or the bond-a-month plan where you bank. There's no finer investment in the world. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye, Jake Carroll Nash, and thanks again for being with us. You have been listening to Guest Star, a transcribed feature for Defense Bonds, presented by this station each week as a public service. May I express our thanks to our star, J. Carroll Nash, for a fine performance, and to his supporting players, Lou Merrill, Gene Bates, Martha Wentworth, Betty Blythe, and Ned Lefebvre, and his director, Louis Graff. Next week, we'll have another favorite star and more music by Harry Sosnick and the Defense Bonds Orchestra, so we hope you'll join us. Meanwhile, this is John Conti saying so long and reminding you to save for your country's defense by United States Defense Bonds. Welcome back. A moving production. The meeting between Bartoli and Emma Lazarus is, as far as I can tell, completely fictitious. Her poem, The New Colossus, was written in 1883 to raise funds for the statue's pedestal. It was part of an exhibition which was successful and closed down in 1885 and then the poem quickly faded away into obscurity. It was published in a catalog, so maybe Bartoli read it. We just don't know. What we do know is that a friend of Emma Lazarus' got the poem revived attention and was able to raise funds to cast a bronze pedestal of the poem and have it placed on the inner wall of the pedestal of the statues. Yet the story is less history than its poetry and the love of liberty that united people from both sides of the Atlantic in creating a beautiful piece of art that reflected the great hope that liberty represents not just to Americans, but to the entire world. If you enjoyed this production, there's also a very good copyrighted audio drama written by Norman Corwin and narrated by Charles Corolt called Our Lady of Freedoms, which is a bit more detailed, but still quite moving. For my part, I think this is a very good basic overview of the story and the emotion behind it. Fans of old-time radio comedies may recognize the performance of Mr. Nash, as it's quite similar to the one he gave for many years on the radio sitcom Life of Luigi, playing the lead character Luigi Basco. I have to confess I was a little startled the first time I heard Mr. Nash's natural voice, as I've often heard him playing not only Luigi, but all of these other interesting characters. But I think he did a great job in this production and a performance that showed his acting talent and also captured the love that brought America one of its most iconic monuments. It's time for me to close up the old snack wagon, but don't worry, we'll be back with another serving of old-time radio goodness before you know it. If you want to enjoy some of our longer-form podcasts, you can feast away at my website at greatdetectives.net. Your emails are also welcome at adam at snackwagon.net. The Old Time Radio Snack Wagon comes to you from Boise, Idaho. Your host is Adam Graham. Sound production is by Rhines Media, LLC. You can listen to past episodes of the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon as well as connect on social media at our website at snackwagon.net. 
email suggestions for episodes to adam at snackwagon.net. This has been the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon. Until next time, goodbye.